Hi there, it's uh, Sarah of Get Weaving and it's sewing today. So it's all about sewing your garment. Um, I'm going to work through the instructions. So far we've woven our fabric and made a mock-up, which is the one behind me, of this pattern. T001, I'm making them on with sleeves, this one here. So we've worked all that out. It's cut out, did that last time. Everything's labelled. So I only have one of each side, <laughs> front and back, two sleeves. And I keep the labels on for the moment because I find it quite helpful. The edges have all been sealed and either overlocked or zigzagged, whichever you've got. But you definitely need to stabilise the edges before you start sewing because if your hand woven fabric is anything like mine it's possibly going to unravel a bit i don't felt or fool my woolen garments i just wash them as if they were a nice sweater i don't really want them to be too harsh i want them to stay really soft so they would certainly unravel if i didn't do something to seal the edges so First thing I'm going to do is read the instruction booklet from start to finish. I know some of you will be quite experienced sewers, but some of the things in here maybe aren't kind of done quite the, the way that you would normally do them because it's hand woven fabric and the way it's put together. So please just read the whole thing from start to finish. So we've already done the layout um, putting on the woven interfacing and then on page four of this booklet it says construction and step number one is the front seam so on the front seam of the pattern there's um, a large dot I'm going to sew up to that large dot and then that is the the opening for the front of the neck I reinforce it by going backwards and forwards at the start and the finish. So what I'm going to do is rather than have you sitting watching me sewing, <laughs> which isn't wildly exciting, I'm going to do that bit. So I've got here uh, the two fronts ready to go. And I have marked where that dot is with a pin. Can you see that? And you can see, I hope, that I put my pins in horizontally. That way, the two layers of fabric are less likely to move against each other. So I do that all the way down, about every four inches, something like that. And the centre front seam, as I said, goes from this pin here right the way down to the bottom. I take the pins out as I go. <laughs> Don't sew over your pins. It's easily done. Um, but it won't do your sewing machine much good. So I'm going to have a little chat in a minute about um, just good needles to use, that sort of thing. So I'll see you in a minute. Righto. I was going to say a few things about your sewing machine. I have a FAF 150. It's about 10 years old now, but it's done pretty well. Just before you start, give it a bit of a clean. You get lots of dust and fluff collecting underneath the bobbin. Uh, threads. Now, my fabric has loads of colours in it, so I could choose any of these and they would all pretty much disappear into it. But my recommendation is that you go for the darker shades rather than the lighter ones. I'm going to take a photograph of this. There are three different colours on here. There's a yellow and there's a red and there's a sort of plummy colour. And really the one that's hardly shows at all is the red one. So that is on my sewing machine now. And I've got the same colour on the bobbin and on the thread. It's best to, apart from anything else, because the tension all works. If you have different types of thread, top and bottom, sometimes the tension isn't brilliant. 
so clean your machine you'll probably find somewhere in your kit you've got a little brush like this so just clean all underneath you might need some tweezers to get out the stubborn bits i've also got a very very fine sewing machine oil which i use periodically um but be careful because obviously you don't want the oil coming out on your hand weaving so uh, if i was going to oil it at all please follow the instructions in your manual that comes with your sewing machine a lot of them don't need oiling at all and you have to be a bit careful about that but i have one handy just in case now really important i would suggest using either ballpoint needles or jersey needles they're the same thing they're for knitted fabrics rather than using the standard ones which i would use on fine cotton the ballpoint needles have a rounded end it's in the description and i find that they work much better with my hand woven fabrics which often are using something very much like knitting yarn so instead of cutting the fibers they sort of slide in between them uh, there you can you can buy them for stretchy fabrics that's what they're for is for sort of knitted fabrics and i just find that they're a lot kinder so you'd ask for either ballpoint needles or jersey needles and go through your threads try them on a remnant <laughs> and if you've got stripes in your warp or your weft just make sure you're following a, following a stripe because that will really show otherwise if you've got a one that's going wonky uh, regarding your stitches i usually have a slightly longer stitch than i might normally use on a very fine fabric uh, sometimes i'll even use a very very narrow zigzag stitch it just seems to sometimes be a little kinder and i nearly always do the hems now with the zigzag stitch because instead of having a straight solid line you've got a little slightly gentler one but that is why you practice on your remnants also have a press cloth handy <laughs> one of my old tea towels um because before you press any of your seams please please try your iron out first make sure it's not spitting um, we have very hard water where i live so i have to use filtered water otherwise i get a lot of line scale there's nothing worse once you've got that you can't get rid of it just make sure it's not too hot it's like a lot of things it's better to start off cooler and build it up a tiny bit if you need to but please test it on a spare piece first on the back of the pattern it tells you that there are seam allowances included in the pattern now if you did 5 8 seam allowances for your mock-up then you'd obviously do 5 8 seam allowances for your final garment otherwise it's not going to be the same size and there is a hem allowance of three centimeters inch and a quarter inches one and a quarter inches but sometimes i'll do slightly less it just depends how i want it to hang so that's why i say read the whole booklet start to finish um, and then just read it as you go along and make sure it makes sense i think it's worth just spending that little bit of extra time you think how long it's taken you to weave your lovely piece of fabric and you really really don't want to be unpicking it so don't assume anything at the moment i've worked these through uh, i worked them through several times with the mock-up that's why i suggest making a mock-up as well because you've practiced the instructions so you can see that they make sense <laughs> hopefully <laughs> right i'm going to do a bit of sewing i'm going to sew the front seam from the dot down to the bottom and i'll back stitch it to support it and then i'll press the seam open and as the instructions say on page four sew front seam leaving open above large dot press open top stitch down both sides of the seam from the neckline to the bottom edge so i should be doing that Okay, I've done that bit of sewing. Um, this is the front. 
So you can see the opening at the top. I've still got the labels on, although I could probably take them off now. So it's all sewn all the way down, top to bottom, and then top stitched on both sides. Just to keep it nice and flat. Uh, it's up to you which side you top stitch from. I actually did this from the front because I wanted to follow one of the warps. So I didn't get a line that really showed very much. Don't worry about this little bit here. It looks a bit vulnerable at the moment, but we're going to put a bit of strengthening on that later on. That's going to be one of the later stages. So the next step, step number two, is to sew the back seam. So these are my two back pieces with the labels. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Centre back seam, five eighths of an inch. Pins horizontally. Stitch all the way down from the top to the bottom. There's no opening in the back. Taking the pins out as I go. And then I'll press that seam open. I have put in the instructions, uh, top stitch down both sides. That's optional. Uh, I think on one of the ones I made of this, it needed it just to lie flat. But if if it's lying flat, then you don't have to do the top stitching. It's more important on the front so that the opening on the vent lies flat. So I'm going to do the back seam. Then I'm going to do the shoulder seams. And at that point, I'm going to put it on my mannequin or my Doris the dummy, <laughs> as I tend to call her. Um, sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody with that. It's um, just quite nice to start seeing your garment all coming together. So I'm going to do the back seam, press that open, and then step number three is front to back at the shoulders. So I'll take photographs as I go as well. Okay, back seam is done. Looking nice. Pressed. Nice and flat. So I'm not going to top stitch this, I don't need it. And I am going to take the labels off at this point. And I should have said earlier, be careful you don't iron over your pins. That won't do your iron any good. And I always try and put the labels fairly much in the centre of the piece. Because with some of these pins, if you iron over them, you're going to melt the heads. <laughs> not great. How do I know this? Hmm. Anyhow, labels can come off now, but I do keep these for later on. I'm frightfully stingy like that. I keep all my labels. So that's the back. Now I've got the front. Take those labels off. Just saves a bit of time another time when I'm making these things. So step number three, right sides together. Front to back of the shoulders. Again, pin them, stitch them, press them open flat. And then I'm going to put it on the dress dummy just to see how it's starting to look. Fairly straightforward so far, I hope. <laughs> Okay, now, what I probably should have said really early on is get to know your sewing machine. What it can do, what the stitches are like. I've got this little device here. I can go backwards with that button. This one here is lit because that keeps the needle in the fabric when I stop sewing. I can alter the length, the width, and then it's got all sorts of fancy pants things up here, which I <laughs> I don't often use actually. But have a, a bit of a play with your sewing machine, especially if you haven't done any sewing for a little while. Just make sure you know how it all works. So far, so good. I've got the garment that I've done so far on the dummy. I've got it inside out, just so you can see what the seams look like. The next thing I'm going to do is the binding for the neck. Now, I like making my own bias tape, and I've decided I am going to use this one. Even though it has white in and my top doesn't, I just prefer it the other one I tried which was this one is lovely but it I don't know anyway this is one I love so I'm going to make some bias tape bias binding and for that you're going to need one of these little things this is how I make mine anyway I'm going to cut some fabric on the bias I've got a fat square here there's plenty here and in my booklet Cutting without fear, 
I've got a whole page of instructions on how to make your own bias tape. I will be doing a complete video on this later on, but for the moment I'm going to make my own. Um, it comes up an inch wide and then it's hidden. It's going to be stitched around the neck, trimmed, turned to the inside and top stitched. There are loads and loads of different ways you can use your bias tape, but that's what I've done with this one. So it doesn't actually show on the outside at all. And then some of these little spare bits are the bits I'm going to use to reinforce the front opening and the side vents. Just it's a bit of a feature then. So although you can buy bias tape, this one's a bought one, it's very stiff and it's very plain. You can get really pretty ones nowadays that are all different patterns and colours. But as I said, I like making my own. I've got lots of different little bits of fabric like this. So these come in different sizes. I've got a selection of them. I'm going to use the 25mm one there by a company called Prim, P-Y, sorry, P-R-Y-M. And um, you basically cut your bias strips and then pull them through here and iron as you go along. So you end up with a nice bias strip. I do plenty of it. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you how the bias tape goes on the neckline. Um, I hope it's clear enough. And obviously, as usual, if you've got any questions, just get in touch. <laughs>
bias tape more usually. So I'm pinning all the way around, just making sure it's nice and flat and I'm not stretching the tape or the neckline. And then I'll stitch it and then I will trim it, not too much, just so that I can tuck the whole thing to the inside. Okay, I've trimmed the seam. That may seem a bit perverse because I've actually cut all the overlocking off, but I've still got the interfacing and I haven't trimmed the binding this time. And what I'm doing then is turning it in. So it's completely hidden on the inside. Now that may seem a bit perverse, having gone to all the trouble of choosing it, but I like it. And it's possible that the front may turn back a little bit and show. So I'm turning it to the inside, I'm pinning all the way along, I will then stitch it. If you're a bit worried about it, baste it in place first, just again to make sure that it looks nice and neat and tidy. You don't really want this happening so that you can see the binding along the outside. Just, I don't know doesn't look so nice. So turn it right in so you can't see the binding or the tape at all. And what I do is, as it says the instructions, turn it to the inside and you tuck this spare piece in. So you tuck that back, turn it in, and that means that the edge, the corner, is all neat and tidy. So again, make your pins go all in the same direction if you want to baste it in place if you don't want top stitching then you could stitch this down by hand but I'll probably stitch it on the machine because it's nice and firm and this time I will do it with the tape on the top and I will make a note of exactly the width of my stitch. Most sewing machines have a guide on them. They have uh, the width of the seams. If you're worried about not staying in one place, put a bit of masking tape so that you can guide your sewing along the masking tape. So nearly done. Turn the end in. Turn the edging, it looks fiddly, but it's fine. Make sure it's neat and tidy. Now, strictly speaking, this doesn't need a button or a loop or anything at the top, but I'll talk to you a little bit about finishing it in a moment. Okay, I'm just about ready to stitch this and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now, <laughs> I don't have enough hands to sew and hold the camera at the same time, so I'm just <laughs> holding it at the moment. Now, I hope you can see what I mean about those guidelines on your sewing machine to make sure whoops, that I stay the same width the whole way along. I'm going to stick that on and then the edge of my fabric is going to run alongside that bit of post-it note. Um, the other thing is I haven't changed the colour of the thread, so it's still red. If I was maybe not doing this as a video, I might have changed it to a blue. But as I said earlier, if the thread on the top and the thread on the bottom aren't exactly the same, sometimes the tension doesn't work. And then you'll find that one, the one that's on the top shows through underneath and vice versa. And the thread that I have on the top is a rather random one and I don't think I have a blue one to match so I'm just carrying on with the red at the moment <laughs> I've done the neckline it's all pressed I press it on both sides the tape side and the garment side obviously when you're doing this it's 
quite important to try and make sure these two are the same length. So it's all been tucked in and stitched on both sides. Now you can see it's lying quite flat. One of the options is to put a button and a loop at the top, but I'll see about that later. You can see that the sides are still open. I haven't put the sleeves in because I think it's much easier to press the neckline with the sides still open because you can put it completely flat on your ironing board. Now I'm going to stop at that point. I'm happy with this. Next bit is to do the side seams and the sleeves. But I'm going to leave it on here for now. And admire it. <laughs> okay, neckline's done. Next bit is to do the side seams. So you can see on the pattern, there's a, a vent marked with a triangle. So the side seam is open from the vent down to the hem. I just think it's a bit more comfortable that way when you sit down. So I have pinned the side seam from the armhole down to the vent. So I'll stitch from the armhole down to the vent, back stitch a couple of times to reinforce it, and then press the whole thing open. And then what I will do is top stitch around that opening to keep that nice and flat. Now, if you've got a nice big table, it does help. Um, just to make sure everything's lying nice and flat. Five eighth inch seam again. I know it'll fit me because the mock-up fitted. So I'm going to do the side seams next. Getting on well. Good oh. So the side seams are done. There's a little opening at the bottom that has been top stitched round. Back's done. It's all lying nice and flat. I I often put it back on the dress dummy rather than just having it screwed up in a heap on the table. Next thing is to do the sleeves. If you were making the sleeveless version, then at this point you would be binding the armholes probably using the same tape that you had for the inside of the neckline. Um, but this version has a short sleeve, which was cut with the warp running in the same direction. So there's very little waste. So this is the left sleeve. So it's going into there, whoops. So I'm going to sew the sleeve seam, the underneath sleeve seam, um, put a little bit of gathering in the crown of the sleeve just so it fits nicely. Stitch those in. Now you have options regarding the hems. I like using the selvages, but if they feel a little bit too long, then you could always turn those under. Or equally, you could put a bit of the bias tape on them to finish them off. Or you could make a feature of them, but I'll talk a little bit about that a bit later. I'm trimming all those thread ends off as I go. I hate looking at a garment at this stage and there's threads all over the place. So you can see there's one or two here. I just think it's annoying. Just one of my things, really. So I try to trim them off as I go along, just so that at any point I can stop and it looks really nice. What I don't want to do is stop and it's just messy, not very inspiring. So I tend to trim everything off as I go and I press as I go. So, yeah, it just looks nice. Each stage adds to it. OK, sleeves next. This is the left and the right sleeves. I've done the left sleeve underarm seam, pressed it open and I've put a running stitch around the crown. Big stitches on your sewing machine just to draw it up a little bit to get it to sit nicely in the armhole. From your pattern you can put marks for the shoulder and then I put 
two little marks just pointing out where the back is. So I know this is my right sleeve. <laughs> just checking. So this is the back when it's stitched together. Bit of gathering around the crown. That's just around the, well, the top bit, if you like, just so that it sits nicely in the armhole. Bear in mind that if you've decided to alter this by nipping in a little bit at the top here, you would have to do the same with your sleeve. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you alter one bit, you'll have to alter the other bit as well. Personally, I'm not going to take that in. I might have done on the sleeveless one. In fact, I think I might have, I did because it gaped a bit on me, but I won't do it with the sleeves because it would make them too tight. So right sides together. Stitch from the armhole. Can't get it to go because I've still got the label on. Let's take that off. Right sides together. Stitch again from the armhole down to the hem. Make sure that's even because if you're not he uh, putting a hem on this, that is going to show. I'm quite pleased with this one. I might stitch that little bit flat though. Press the seam open um, just around the crown, a long running stitch just to gather it up a bit and then they can be pinned into the garment. So I'm putting in the right sleeve. I do it from the inside of the garment. So I've held the sleeve in place and now I'm turning to the inside. I'm matching the shoulder seam of the garment with that mark that I made on the sleeve. Now I realize I'm talking in very basic terms about some of the sewing techniques baste this, stitch that. There are some really good sewing books out there and I'm sure some YouTubes and all sorts of other things. I'll probably do a little booklet on all about the sewing later on. But for the moment, I don't want to spend hours and hours giving you sewing instructions. As I've said on the back of the patterns, you need some sewing knowledge to attempt these. So anyway, I'm going around with some pins just easing that you can see just gently easing that is hardly any easing necessary especially with hand woven fabric because it's got a little bit of give to it but it just eases that nicely into place so I'm pinning all the way around and then when I stitch I will be stitching with the sleeve closest to me and the garment underneath so I've done half of it I can just check see what it's looking like yeah that's looking nice so I'll do the other half I like the Dorlin Kindersley books I think they're brilliant for sewing instructions um, or you can look all sorts of things up on Google. If I come across some really good sewing videos, I'll certainly pass that on. Now again, just easing them in. So what I do is I just gently, well, if you like, pull one against the other until it lies flat. Doesn't sound very technical, does it? <laughs> I haven't tried it on yet because I know the mock-up fitted me. I'm going to wait. So I've pinned all the way around. When you come to a seam, make sure it's lying flat and when you stitch it doesn't get crossed back. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put pins in to hold those seams flat. Then as I go round, I just check that I'm not catching them. So that's one sleeve pinned in. I'm not going to decide what to do about the hems of the sleeves until I've dried it on. I think that's looking fine. So that's the right sleeve. Now I'll do the left sleeve. <laughs> I've tried it on. It's just fine. <laughs> I'm 
just as surprised as anybody. Obviously, I had no idea <laughs> really what this was going to look like. So it's a nice surprise. I'm going to put a little bit of this bias tape here to reinforce that. And the same bit, the same on these side vents here, because they are a bit vulnerable to tearing. <laughs> I'm very pleased with it. <laughs> do forgive me. <laughs> um, I do have enough left to make some pockets. I'm going to have a bit of a think about that. I don't want the fabric to pull. Mm, I might make a pocket and then see how I feel about it. <laughs> I'm going to stop at this point, make a cup of tea. So I'm nearly there. The last things are to reinforce the openings, which I can do because I've got some. I might have to make a bit more of this. That's fine. And to do the hems at the bottom. Um, so I'll probably finish that off quite soon. <laughs> Oh dear, this has obviously taken much longer than when I normally make something, so um, do forgive me, <laughs> it's getting a bit frivolous. Well, we're all done. But I just wanted to say a couple of things that you could possibly do with the neckline if you wanted to. This is an ankle band. They work really nicely because they've got quite a lot of give to them. So that's one possibility. I don't really have a right colour for this, but lace works quite nicely as well if you want to do that. The only thing is it's got to be a fairly narrow one because otherwise it's just not going to go around the corners. And I think it's probably best hand stitched. So that's another possibility. I call this one Rick Rack. <laughs> I don't know if it has another name, but this one goes on nicely because it's got that lovely zigzag edge. So it's really easy to get it to go around corners. Probably not that colour though, but a blue one would look nice. Now, this possibly isn't your thing at all, but when we go away on holiday, if I see anybody making lace, I always buy a little bit. I think that could be really pretty. Again, it's got a very um, open edge, which is easy to get round corners. Just a thought. And last but not least, the one thing that you probably can't use is just a flat ribbon. You can see it just doesn't want to go round corners. So if it lies flat on the outer edge, it's going to be all bunched up on the inner edge like that. Horrible. I think the finish on these things is really important. So these little reinforcements just add a bit of interest to them. Uh, what else could you do? Oh, a button and loop you could put across here. little button and loop if you wanted to with a covered button. Or um, like frogging, Chinese frogging, that sort of thing. Anyway, as usual, <laughs> I'm in the wrong season. I started this when it was really, really cold and I was weaving with wool. <laughs> and now it's got quite warm. Um, I'll probably be wearing it with a T-shirt underneath. What I need to start doing is weaving wool in the summer so it's ready for the winter and vegetable fibres and what have you in the winter but of course I don't feel like it anyhow I shall put this on in a minute and you can see what it looks like thank you very much for listening I hope there's been something of some help in here um, this book here whoopsie <clears throat> this is the Dorling Kindersley sewing book sorry the light's catching it and it's got loads and loads of things in here, step-by-step -step instructions. Really good. Um, finishes, hems, seams, all kinds of stuff. Really good illustrations, very clear. Pockets. I'm going to think about pockets later on. Anyway, this is a really useful book. I think that's about all I've got to say. Uh, next time, I'm going to do one called Help. Help. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is what happens when things um, you're weaving perhaps hasn't quite turned out as you wanted, maybe the size that you wanted or the width that you wanted and you don't know what to do with it. Um, so I'll have some suggestions because it's happened to all of us. Anyway, speak to you soon. Bye now.